dinosaur fossils. Believe it or not, some of the strangest things ever found in Antarctica have been dinosaur fossils. In 2016 alone, researchers announced that they discovered a diverse cache of many fossils in Antarctica. This doesn't mean just a few different bones, researchers found at least a metric ton worth of fossils after an international research team went digging. According to a professional biologist from the University of Queensland, most of the fossils found were between 71 million and 67 million years old. So what kind of creatures did they find? Most of the fossils were from clams, cephalopods, and shells, but they also found the bones of some prehistoric marine reptiles. Perhaps the coolest dinosaur fossil ever found in Antarctica was way before this, though. The most celebrated dinosaur on the southernmost continent of our planet was discovered in 1991, and it's a beast that looks a whole lot like a T-Rex. It's properly known as a Cryolophosaurus, and it was likely the largest land predator of its time in the early Jurassic period. This was a time when Antarctica was approximately 600 miles north of its current position, and rather than ice, the continent was covered in temperate forests, meaning it was home to winged reptiles and other amazing creatures. The Cryolophosaurus was a meat-eating dinosaur that probably could have taken on any of the famous dinos you know about today. Unfortunately, this amazing creature went extinct 190 million years ago. In terms of its height, it probably stood at about 20 feet tall. Ancient Meteorite an ancient meteorite that was found in Antarctica over 20 years ago is still the topic of a lot of controversy. It all started when NASA scientists announced that they had found possible signs of Martian life inside a meteorite from Antarctica. This is straight from NASA themselves. The meteorite has since been labeled as the famous Allen Hills meteorite, also known as ALH84001. It landed on Earth likely due to a cosmic impact on Mars, which was powerful enough to blast rocks off the planet's surface, and one of them just so happened to reach our own planet. This happened somewhere around 13,000 years ago, with the meteorite being discovered by geologists on snowmobiles back in 1984, but the rock itself originated 4 billion years ago on Mars. The reason the meteorite is so controversial is because NASA scientists believed at the time that it held evidence of microbial fossils that could only have been produced by biological processes. In the published study from 1996, researchers claimed the presence of such fossils indicated a high likelihood of life beyond Earth, specifically on the Red Planet. Since that first study, a lot of debate has gone on with supporters on both sides. Some say it does not mean a thing about life in the universe, and others are still 100% convinced that it does. The truth is that nobody knows for sure, even all these years later. Buried Viruses One of the strangest discoveries to happen on the continent of Antarctica has been of a viral nature. I'm talking about viruses buried beneath the ice. As the planet begins to warm, the ice begins to thaw. As that happens, some stuff that has been buried in the ice for thousands of years is being revealed. Scientists say that the most dangerous thing to come from Antarctica thawing will be prehistoric viruses. Scientists claim that these viruses have been dormant inside glaciers and permafrost for at least 10,000 years or 15,000 years. Just earlier in 2020, scientists analyzed ice core samples from an ice cap in Tibet, and they identified several viruses that had been locked in the settlement for over 15,000 years, some of which were totally unknown. And that's only in Tibet. The issue with Antarctica is that the whole place is covered in ice. Not just a bit of it, the entire thing. Antarctica was not always this way either. It was once a beautiful forest with many different life forms, including dinosaurs. And because thousands of years ago, microbes that aren't around today inhabited the soil of the Antarctic jungle, the entire continent is basically a giant petri dish frozen in time. It is highly likely that as the ice melts, pathogens that we don't know about will be released into the atmosphere. According to a professor of genomics and bioinformatics at the I. Marseille University in France, some ancient viruses such as smallpox could make a reappearance in the world as the ice melts. But worse than that, this same scientist claimed that older viruses that had caused animal extinctions in the past could come back to bite us in the butt. Antarctic UFO this next story is not in any way confirmed. However, the photographs that have appeared online of a UFO frozen under the ice of Antarctica are definitely thought-provoking. It's actually a little scary. A Russian man published the photo on social media after finding it on Google Earth. In the photo, you can see a crack in the ice and what appears to be a UFO deep down inside of it. This guy claims it got stuck in the ice after an accident that happened in 2016. The guy also claimed that the UFO in the picture measures at least 200 feet 60 meters. And yeah, the picture definitely looks like a disc-shaped flying machine. However, there have been no legitimate reports of this. 
the truth is that nobody really knows what the image shows or if it's even real. It could just be a tear in the ice, it could be an unidentified flying object, or it could be something left over from a lost civilization. It could even just be photoshopped. The truth is that we don't know, but it's definitely cool to think that there is a whole mothership buried under the ice in Antarctica. Hidden Antarctic Pyramids Deep in the frozen world of Antarctica, there is a mountain that looks suspiciously like a pyramid. This mountain has become famous recently on social media, with many people pointing out that it could be evidence of a previous civilization that lived on the continent before it was frozen in ice. Of course, there are other people who are claiming that it's an alien pyramid purposely covered in snow. According to experts, all those theories are wrong. A professor of Earth System Science from the University of California told Live Science in an email that the mountain only looks like a pyramid. The steep sides are actually the work of hundreds of millions of years of weather erosion, and it's not actually uncommon for a peak to look like the tip of a pyramid. This mountain doesn't have a formal name, but it's one of the many mountains inside the Ellsworth Mountain Range in Antarctica. They were first spotted by an American aviator on a flight in 1935, but it was not until all the crazy people got in the internet that the mountain turned into a pyramid. The mountains are located in a hot zone for fossils, very close to the area where a trilobite was found dated to be at least 500 million years old. Oldest Worm Ever You probably wouldn't expect to find sperm in Antarctica. Typically, things that don't have bones don't fossilize very well. This includes sperm and worms. That's what makes it so strange that scientists discovered fossilized worm sperm in Antarctica that is at least 50 million years old. This was published in a scientific journal, in which researchers from the Swedish Museum of Natural History claim that they made the find while examining a fossilized cocoon made by one of these weird worm creatures. For whatever reason, the cocoons are extremely resistant to decay. While investigating one of the cocoons, also known as an egg case, the scientists found a spermatozoa cell. After further research, they determined that what they had found was 10 million years older than any other fossilized sperm on Earth. Nonetheless, researchers still don't know what the creature looked like, but they believe that the sperm found is very similar to that of crayfish worms, which are weird animals that live on freshwater lobsters and look kind of like leeches. And to disappoint even further, even though they found the cell, there were no DNA remains to investigate. This means that there will be no biological reincarnation of this weird worm in the lab anytime soon. The B-15 Iceberg the first thing that comes to mind when you think about an iceberg is probably the Titanic sinking. And while the iceberg that hit the Titanic was pretty sizable, the biggest iceberg on record was actually recorded in 2000. It's known as Iceberg B-15 and it was roughly the size of Connecticut when it was found. That's right, this single iceberg was literally as big as the state of Connecticut. It broke away from Antarctica in late 2000 and is still the biggest iceberg recorded that has ever broken off of the Ross Ice Shelf. However, 18 years after the iceberg broke away from the the continent, a new discovery shows that it's melting at an alarming rate. It has fractured into a bunch of smaller icebergs, and most of them have melted. There are only four pieces of this enormous iceberg left, with the biggest piece being called B-15Z. The International Space Station captured photos of this remaining shard in 2018, and experts believe it's nearing the end of its journey. This isn't really that shocking, but it's still a pretty cool story. Crash Landing there is only one possible explanation for the photo that has appeared online of what looks to be some sort of crash landing in Antarctica. It's obviously an alien spaceship. In the photograph, it looks like some kind of spear-shaped craft hit the ice, skidded for quite some time, and then was buried under the snow. And yes, the only reasonable explanation is that it came from space. However, that might not be such a reasonable explanation after all. According to a senior lecturer in physical geography at Keel University, the photo actually shows an avalanche that caused a huge block of ice to go skating down the mountainside and then roll for much farther than any other pieces of debris. According to the professional, what is obviously an alien ship is actually just a huge piece of ice covered in snow. And what is obviously a trail of destruction made when the ship collapsed is really just the trail of that block of ice skidding across the snow. Of course, the biggest reason why this looks so much like an alien crash is because the photos you have probably seen only show the piece of ice covered in snow from above. If you look at the larger photo, you can very clearly see there is a huge mountain near the object, and there are lots of smaller pieces of debris that just didn't make it that far. Sorry everyone, but you have been duped. The Loneliest ATM on Earth 
Everyone knows that money rules the world. One of the strangest things you would discover on a trip to Antarctica has nothing to do with aliens, wildlife, or geological formations. The strangest thing is definitely the loneliest ATM machine in the world. Even though Antarctica is home to elephant seals, perpetual darkness, and basically no humans, Wells Fargo installed an automatic teller machine in 1998 anyways. You can find the ATM machine at McMurdo Station, the biggest scientific installation on the continent. But why? McMurdo Station only has a population of between 250 and 1,000, and the community is very small. But according to Mental Floss, commerce there is critical. That's because there are indeed coffee shops, bars, a post office, and general stores on the continent. Even though it's a closed economy, people still need cash. After all, credit card machines don't really work that well at the bottom of the earth. You're probably wondering who services this ATM machine. Well, according to a spokesperson from Wells Fargo, the company actually trains the staff at McMurdo Station to do simple repairs. There is also a secondary ATM machine that is able to be used for parts. Then every two years a vendor is chosen to make the journey to Antarctica just to service the machine and bring it up to speed with the latest technology. But this is no easy job. The people chosen actually have to undergo a psychological exam and a physical exam to ensure that they are able to deal with the brutal Arctic climate and the possible psychological damage that occurs from taking such a journey. The Ice Fish Last on the list for today is one of the strangest fish ever to be found in Antarctica. New research has shed some light on the fish known as the Antarctic Blackfin Ice Fish. This weird sea creature has a transparent skull and see-through blood. It's an absolute anomaly in the world of marine life. The fact that such a strange creature can live in such a hostile environment, meaning the icy waters around Antarctica, has baffled scientists for quite a few years. But in a new study published in Nature Ecology and Evolution, a team of scientists explained how they mapped the genome of of this fish and compared it to its close relatives. What they found is incredibly interesting. Apparently, tens of millions of years of evolution has resulted in the ice fish gaining some unusual features. The first weird feature is that the ice fish has clear blood. That's because it doesn't make red blood cells and it doesn't have any hemoglobin to carry oxygen throughout its body. While those traits are critical for most animals to survive, the ice fish just does not need it. It has evolved special antifreeze for its blood since red blood would get too gunky and hard to pump and Cold water. The fish also developed extremely large gills and shed its scales, and this allowed it to absorb oxygen directly through its skin rather than needing the type of blood system that we have. It's also expanded its circulatory system and grew a heart four times larger than any closely related fish species with red blood. This fish is a prime example of Darwin's theory of evolution. Take two fish, leave one of them in icy waters and the other in tropical waters, and watch as they evolve. One of them has clear blood, the other has red blood. The Antarctic ice fish is truly fascinating. Seahawk Fighter Jet Back in 1964, a Seahawk fighter jet crashed into the ocean. The aircraft had apparently been hijacked by a young maintenance worker who wished to be a pilot but had been rejected by the Air Force. So he became an ordnance mechanic instead. Then one Sunday morning, he climbed into the cockpit of a Seahawk, started the engine, took her up into the air, then crashed it into the Bay of Bengal. Luckily, the pilot was rescued by a local fisherman. However, the aircraft was never recovered. It sat at the bottom of the bay for around 40 years. Even though all the locals knew where it was, nobody had any interest in retrieving the aircraft from the muck. It was not until 2010 that divers went down to see the vehicle for the very first time, and yes, it was sitting spookily at the bottom of the bay, surrounded by fish and mud. The Seahawk was never pulled out of the water, but divers did find its remains, which is good enough for some people. As for the ordnance mechanic who allegedly stole and crashed the plane in the first place, he was sentenced to two years imprisonment and later fled India for Canada. The Yonaguni Pyramid off the coast of Japan, there's a giant rock formation and nobody knows what it is. The Yonaguni Pyramid is undoubtedly the most mysterious object ever found underwater. It was first spotted by divers in 1987 and you can very clearly see from any angle that the Yonaguni Pyramid must have been made by human hands. It clearly has levels, steps, and smooth sides that could only have been done by a being with technology. And despite its discovery in the 80s, the government of Japan continues to deny that this underwater oddity has anything to do with history or archaeology. Theology. Basically, nobody in any official capacity wants to talk about the pyramids, suggesting that there could be something spooky going on. Even though most researchers believe the ruins date back to at least 5,000 years ago and were at least manipulated somewhat by human hands, officials continue to ignore it. 
but it's getting harder to ignore. There is ample evidence that the Yonaguni Pyramid was crafted by humans. For example, there was a triangular depression found in the monument that had two holes beside it, which led researchers to believe that there was an attempt to separate the rock by using wedges. So somebody obviously had a hand in crafting this bizarre underwater spectacle, and despite everything, the Japanese Agency for Cultural Affairs and the government of the Okinawa Prefecture have denied the pyramid as an important historical artifact. What are they trying to hide? New Blob Species Let's move from stone to life. In 2020, scientists from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration formally identified a new species of creature for the very first time based only on video footage taken from the bottom of the ocean. And what a creature it is. It's a strange gelatinous blob known as Duobrachium sparksae, and it looks like something that should be floating around in outer space. This blob is a species of tinafore, and it was captured on video by a remotely operated vehicle near the coast of Puerto Rico. The strange blob was found about two and a half miles beneath the surface, and while claiming a new species based on nothing but video evidence is preposterous and unheard of, they actually managed to get away with it this time because the creature was so uniquely strange. No other living thing on Earth has two long tentacles and a body that's basically just a transparent balloon. According to one of the oceanographers who worked on the project, the organism is beautiful and unique. It moves like a hot air balloon slowly over the sea floor, using its two tentacles like anchors. It maintains a very specific altitude while floating. However, researchers are not sure if it's actually anchored to the seabed, and even though the blob looks like a jellyfish, it's actually a completely different organism. Apollo Rocket Engines Imagine coming across a space rocket stuck in the sand at the bottom of the ocean. You would immediately think extraterrestrial spaceship. But of course, this story is about the Apollo moon rocket engines that were raised from the bottom of the sea by the ridiculously rich CEO of Amazon, Jeff Bezos. What's really interesting about the Apollo rocket engines is that everyone had thought they were lost forever. They were the huge engines that launched the astronauts to the moon around 50 years ago, but it took a private expedition led by the founder of an internet company to find them. So good job to the government on this one. These rockets were originally used in the 60s and 70s to send missions from Earth into orbit and to the moon. The mighty Saturn V rockets gave the space vessels a boost out of the atmosphere before plummeting down into the seafloor. According to Bezos himself, the Apollo rockets will be restored and then likely donated to the Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum in Washington. It's a bit awkward because Bezos paid the money to find the rockets, bring them out of the ocean and restore them, and yet NASA owns them. They kind of have to go with whatever the rich guy says in this case. Mysterious Purple Orb Believe it or not, a mysterious purple disco ball has been discovered deep within the ocean. This is one of the most bizarre and mysterious discoveries of the last few years when it comes to blobs. This thing looked like a glowing blip on the screen. The small purple orb was originally found during an exploration of the Arguello Canyon deep inside the ocean. The orb was actually collected using a suction tool on the remotely operated vehicle Hercules, as none of the scientists could properly identify the orb. After all, it was sitting tucked under a rock shelf about 5,000 feet below the surface. At first glance, it almost appeared to be an alien homing beacon. But of course, it's probably a life form. Researchers first thought that it could be an unknown species of gastropod. However, once the scientists got the purple orb back on board their vessel, they could see that it was clearly not a gastropod. The orb unfolded into something that almost looked like a pair of lungs. According to the report from Live Science, researchers suspected that it was a pleurobranch or a type of mollusk. Whatever it was, this species was definitely unknown. In fact, the scientists were stumped over the identity of the purple blob. Nobody knew why it was glowing, why there was only one of them discovered in such a huge area, or if they would even find another one again. Alien Squid Blobs are interesting enough in their own way, but a recent image out of the Gulf of Mexico is so horrifying that it will literally scare the pants right off your legs. Lurking in the deep and gloomy depths is a species of something that looks like it's straight out of Stephen King's The Mist. This creature doesn't even look like it should be real. The footage of it was captured by a remotely operated vehicle being used by Shell Oil to study the water around its oil rigs. And that's exactly where this monstrous thing was found. It was filmed in the Perdido area of the Alaminos Canyon where Shell Oil has a pretty heavy industrial influence. But what is this terrifying monster? And to answer what everyone's thinking, yes, it is real. It's actually 
actually known as a magna pinna squid, sometimes referred to as the long-armed squid. This is because it's roughly 26 feet in length and has extremely thin tentacles that are almost elastic, being roughly 20 times larger than the squid's actual body. These squids are so rare and so mystifying that not a single one has ever been physically captured or sampled. It actually took the video footage from Shell Oil to reveal the mystery of how this thing even moves. The rare sighting was at a depth of over 7,800 feet. That is pretty much at the bottom of the ocean. It goes to show that way down near the bottom of the sea are all kinds of horrifying monsters that we still probably have not identified. The long-armed squid was only first discovered in 1907, then documented on video for the first time in 1988. Mysterious Underwater Mine Let's stop talking about horrifying sea monsters for a minute. Instead, let's find out what's going on with the strange and mysterious underwater mine recently located in the sprawling labyrinth of underwater caves along the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. It's true that these caves hold some of the most impressive archaeological relics anywhere on the planet. At least the artifacts that divers have uncovered from these underground tunnels have definitely been unique compared to anything else on Earth. But this newest discovery goes way back in time to the earliest prehistoric trace of humankind on the continent. A new study has unearthed the oldest known mine in the Americas. According to Science Alert, a subterranean ochre mine has been found that dates back to 12,000 years ago. An expert diver and micropaleontologist from McMaster University in Canada claims that the underwater caves are like a time capsule with clear evidence of ochre mining thousands of years ago. So what does that mean? And how does it fit in with the heaps of skeletal remains that have been found in nearby caverns that date back only a few thousand years? Well, scientists just don't know the answers yet. Evidence suggests that the submerged cave systems were only operational for about 2,000 years, so between 12,000 years ago and 10,000 years ago, ancient people would have extracted the ochre, then just kind of gave up the cave and left. But scientists can't really say why. It could be that they moved on to other deposits, considering there are still hundreds and hundreds of miles of unexplored caves in the area. Or something else could have happened. Scientists just can't be sure. All they know is that the ochre pigment must have been incredibly important for ancient people to go through so much trouble of mining it. The Longest Animal Ever I know that I said enough of the sea monsters, but let's take a look at another sea monster. And believe me, this one is going to blow your mind. The world's longest animal has recently been discovered in the waters of Australia. That's right, it's the longest animal ever documented, and it's weirdly spooky. At first, it almost looks like some kind of alien string or something that fell off their spaceship. But according to scientists, it's actually a siphonophore, which is a deep sea predator made up of multiple clones all acting together as one organism. This particular siphonophore measured an estimated 150 feet. That makes it the longest animal ever. It's about twice as long as any blue whale and at least three times longer than any humpback whale. It's also incredible and acts like a jellyfish in that it feeds by dangling thin tentacles into the water that can sting fish and crustaceans unlucky enough to swim beneath its curtain of stingers. This is not the kind of creature you want to be caught in the middle of. Imagine trying to swim through all those poisonous rings. The USS Oriskany in the Pensacola Pass, deep in the spooky waters of the Gulf of Mexico is the USS Oriskany. It's definitely one of the spookiest ghost ships beneath the water. It's also the world's largest artificial reef. It was once an aircraft carrier, but now sits 22 miles southeast of the Pensacola Pass, 212 feet beneath the ocean. The ship was commissioned near the end of World War II, but it never saw any action until Korea. Then, in 1963, JFK boarded the vessel to witness military operations, but alas, the ship did not prove very useful and it was eventually decommissioned in 1976. Then in 2006, they sunk the boat to make an artificial reef. Now it's one of the spookier places you can go diving off the coast of Florida. It's full of fish, it's full of history, and in the murky waters, it'll feel like you're exploring a sunken vessel from a bygone age. The Bloop not all the mysterious things found underwater are visible. For example, there is the mysterious bloop. It was a sound heard on hydrophones in 1997. To this day, nobody is sure what made this strange noise. It was extremely loud, delivered at an ultra-low frequency, and was heard at different listening stations underwater thousands of miles apart. It's one of the only truly baffling noises ever picked up by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Many scientists put forth their own theories in the years following 1997, saying the bloop could have been an unknown animal, but the truth is that nobody has ever solved this mystery. Also, the NOAA is fairly sure the sound was not made by a creature. 
Some think that it could have been the cracking of an ice shelf breaking off from Antarctica. In fact, a seismologist from the Oregon State University claims the bloop was indeed the sound of an ice quake. This guy also says that the idea of a giant animal being able to make a noise heard all across the Pacific Ocean was always more of a fantasy than a science. But just what does this guy think he knows? The sound could very well have been the yawn of Cthulhu or even the rousing of the old ones from deep beneath the earth. Which of these underwater discoveries was the most fascinating? Valle de Mulini If you've ever wondered what the world would look like without people, take a glance at the Valley of the Mills in Sorrento, Italy. This place is an oddly peaceful look into a humanless future. The valley began life 35,000 years ago after a large volcanic eruption created a deep crevice in the earth. Then in the 13th century, flour mills were built inside the crack. They took advantage of the constant stream at the floor of the valley. The mill was quite successful and so other industrial outfits sprung up in the area to take advantage of the same water system, including a sawmill and a wash house. However, most of the mills and their industries became obsolete in the early 1900s and closed. Since at least the 1940s, the valley of the mills has been completely abandoned. Over 80 years later and the brick buildings are nearly gone, overgrown with beautiful greenery. This is truly a breathtaking place and a fantastic reminder that if humans were to just stop existing, Mother Nature would very quickly erase any trace that we had ever been here. Fairy Tale House Near the abandoned village of Ostashevo, deep in the rural wilderness of Russia, there is an abandoned house that, depending on your perception, is either a nightmare or a beautifully tranquil property. The wooden structure is definitely not livable and would require a significant number of renovations just to make it habitable. Nonetheless, it kind of looks like something out of an old Russian fairy tale. The house was likely built by a wealthy industrialist sometime near the end of the 19th century. However, it's not been confirmed who built the house or why they abandoned it. At first glance, the house doesn't appear to have been lived in for very long. Much of the floor is missing, there are no windows, and it's very susceptible to Russian bear attacks. But here is where the story gets amazing. Someone actually purchased this decrepit and abandoned piece of property and completely restored it, turning it into a fairy tale Russian castle. Then in 2016, this magical forest property opened as a hotel museum where you can learn about the local history while staying in one of the most unique places ever. Have you ever encountered an abandoned place? Maybe a gas station down some rural road or a farmhouse that still has equipment from 50 years ago? Or somewhere even more surprising and unique? Tell me about your experiences finding somewhere totally abandoned in the comments below. Then be sure to subscribe to Taltanic for more awesome videos just like this one. Columbia's Beautifully Haunted Hotel Just because a place is haunted does not mean it's not beautiful. The Hotel del Salto in Colombia is one of the most breathtaking structures in the world. It's also abandoned and full of ghosts. It's located just outside of Bogota and was built in 1923 as a residential manor. The building was constructed using striking French architecture with high windows and the pure elegance of the 1920s. According to a report from the Vintage News, the house was opened as a hotel in 1928 for wealthy travelers and then operated for 60 years before being abandoned. Tourists lost interest in the area and the hotel was forced to close in the 1990s, but since then, it has become a popular tourist attraction for its desolate beauty. The hotel sits on the edge of a cliff overlooking a waterfall and the jungle. It's one of the most picturesque places near Bogota. As for the hauntings, there are some local legends that claim many indigenous people died at the site of the hotel while trying to escape Spanish conquerors, and their spirits still haunt the area today. Hearthstone Castle Deep in the woods of Connecticut is Hearthstone Castle, a beautiful pile of crumbling stone completely abandoned. It was built between 1896 and 1899 as a summer retreat for a New York photographer. You really have to wonder how much money photographers were making in the 1800s to be able to afford a literal castle. This place had 16 rooms, 9 of which were bedrooms, plus a library and even a billiard room. The exterior was crafted from stone and the wood was imported from Italy. What's really crazy is that the photographer and his family only lived in this place for five years before selling it to a gentleman in 1902, who then sold it to another gentleman in 1918. Seventy years later, the castle was abandoned before eventually being purchased by the city of Danbury. Since then, it has been vandalized, riddled with graffiti, and left to rot. Technically, the castle is in a park which makes it public property. It's a must-see on your next trip to Connecticut. The Initiation Well 
There is a place known as the Initiation Well in Portugal near the small town of Sintra. The well is 88 feet, but was never actually used as a water resource. The creepily beautiful place was actually constructed for secret ceremonies. The well is part of Quinta de Regalera, which was commissioned by a well-known Portuguese Freemason who constructed the property with the help of a skilled Italian architect. The property consists of several spooky buildings, mysterious parks, and even underground tunnels. Almost all of the structures are linked to one secret order or another, including the Masons, the Knights Templar, and even Tarot mysticism. The original palace was constructed in 1904, complete with a gothic facade, carved gargoyles, and five floors. The history of this place literally goes on and on. It transferred owners throughout the years, more confusing structures were built onto it, and then there's the Initiation Well. The Initiation Well is also an entrance to an underground labyrinth. It has a spiral staircase, nine landings, and is likely linked to mysterious tarot mysticisms and Masonic principles. The nine landings are even thought to represent the nine circles of hell, the nine sections of purgatory, and the nine skies of paradise. This is one of the spookiest and yet captivating properties in the world. In fact, this is inarguably the most amazing abandoned place ever. It's unclear what rituals exactly went on at the bottom of this well or inside the depths of the palace, but it's now abandoned and silent. Confronc Station Confranc Station in Spain is purely gorgeous. It's undoubtedly one of the most beautiful train stations in the world, nestled on all sides by mountains and sparse forests. The station originally opened in 1928 as one of Europe's largest rail hubs. The inauguration ceremony was even attended by the King of Spain and the President of the French Republic. But then in World War II, the train station was the site of all kinds of horrible acts. Espionage, the trafficking of gold, and many arrests occurred there. By 1970, this station closed its doors and went abandoned. It has sat completely unused ever since then, with the interior rusting away and the old trains turning into relics of the past. There's little evidence now of the tragedies that went on during the 1940s. The station is quiet and serene. However, Spanish authorities are hoping to revitalize the station for tourism purposes. In the next few years, Confranc Station may once again be open for business, but until then, it remains an empty husk of a simpler and yet in some ways far more complex complicated time. The Hachijo Royal Hotel the Hachijo Royal Hotel is one of the most impressive abandoned buildings ever. The hotel is located on a volcanic island about 178 miles south of Tokyo, dubbed the Hawaii of Japan. It was an extremely popular destination for Japanese tourists in the 1960s as it was almost impossible for Japanese citizens to travel outside of the country. But then in 1964, the government made it easier for the Japanese to travel and tourism boomed. Still, not everyone wanted to leave the country and so the Hachijo Royal Hotel became wild popular as a gorgeous seaside resort that did not involve traveling to nearby Thailand or Hawaii. It opened in 1963 and was one of the largest hotels in all of Japan. However, by 2000, things were falling apart. Japanese were traveling abroad in record numbers and nobody cared about going to the Hawaii of Japan anymore. Finally, the hotel was forced to close in 2006 because of non-existent tourists. Since then, the hotel has sat abandoned, it's been overgrown, the pools are empty, the rooms are a tattered and decaying mess, and the sea continues to riot against the shore just a few feet from the hotel doors. Italy's Abandoned Ghost Town Leave it to Italy to have an entire abandoned ghost town from medieval times sitting on the edge of a small mountain. The town's name is Krakow, and for 50 years it has sat abandoned. The houses are still there, the streets are still in relatively good condition, but there are no humans around. The dark windows look across the land like vacant eye sockets, while the rock facades slowly crumble into dust. So what happened to this once magnificent town? Well, in the year 1561, there were about 2,500 people in the town. Back then, that was a pretty good number. There was a permanent monastic order, an agricultural community, and they were making headways in science and religion. But then in 1656, a plague struck the city and killed most of the population. Then near the end of the 19th century, a famine caused a mass migration. Almost everyone moved from Krakow to North America between 1892 and 1922. Then in 1933, there was a huge landslide that caused even more people to move. And finally, between the 1950s and the 1970s, a series of landslides prompted the last dozen or so remaining residents to flee. All that's left now is a beautiful landscape from a medieval world we can only dream about. Herda Island Ghost Town 
The Herda Island ghost town is located in one of the most vacant and beautiful places on Earth, the Outer Hebrids in Scotland. Nobody has lived on this remote island since 1930, and yes, it is truly beautiful in the most isolated sense of the word. It's the remotest island in the United Kingdom and had previously been occupied for 2,000 years. But all that changed in 1930 when the island was evacuated following the death of a young woman who perished of pneumonia, which would not have been fatal if she had been living on the mainland. Another issue is that the people in the town had lived off of things like weaving, fishing, and farming, and it simply was not going to cut it anymore. This truly was one of the last ancient places on Earth where the people lived the traditional way of life. Nonetheless, the island was abandoned in the face of the modern world. A ship took the remaining few villagers to mainland Scotland, they left behind an open Bible in each cottage before getting on the ship, and interestingly enough, the very last resident of this ghost town who was evacuated at 8 years old died in April of 2016. The island today is a UNESCO World Heritage Site with a small population of sheep and a whole lot of puffins. Dundas Castle Let's examine yet another castle, both abandoned and impressively aesthetic. The Dundas Castle in New York is not quite as impressive as Hearthstone Castle in Connecticut, but it is still a beautiful location nonetheless. It's surrounded by the deep forests of the Catskill Mountains and looks like it was designed based on a young child's vision of medieval Europe. In fact, the Dundas Castle in New York was heavily modeled after the original Dundas Castle in Scotland. It's basically a luxurious medieval mansion, but it did not start out like that. It was constructed as a small summer house for an architect in the 1880s, but when he passed away in 1911, the land and house went up for sale, the ownership traded hands several times, more additions were built, and the castle was eventually abandoned sometime around the 1950s after never having been lived in by any of its owners. Dundas Castle is now beautiful in a spooky kind of way. It's been pretty badly vandalized throughout the years, but it still remains in surprisingly good condition. A local legend even says that three of the heart-shaped ponds on the grounds fill up with blood during the full moon. It's also said that the castle is cursed since none of the people who ever owned it managed to actually live in it. Which of these beautiful abandoned places would you just love to visit to spend one night at? Let me know your thoughts in the comments and thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and come back soon for another awesome video.